for this video, I found some old pharmacy bottles online, which contain silver gluconate, which is the silver salt of gluconic acid. Relative to the silver content, they were pretty cheap, and therefore I wanted to try to get the silver out of them and see if it is possible to make a profit. So let's just get into opening them and see what's inside. They are still fully wrapped in a protective paper and are also sealed pretty well, so I'm sure that the original content is still in here and that it hasn't been tampered with or refilled. So this is what the inside looks like, it's just a blackish powder. Now let's get everything out and we can take a closer look. So now that everything is out, I want to convert the silver gluconate to something I can work with. Right now it contains a lot of carbon, which would take a lot of effort to incinerate, and it would make a big mess. So I'm going to remove it. To do that, I will use nitric acid, which will separate the carbon and the silver by producing gluconic acid and silver nitrate. So to the powder, I add about 100 milliliters of 90% nitric acid. We can instantly see the powder basically melt away and see the formation of the silver nitrate and gluconic acid. Part of it dissolves and the undissolved part we see as the white stuff. To make sure everything reacts and dissolves, I help it a bit by adding a bit of water and stirring it around. To make sure all the silver is converted to silver nitrate, I add a little bit more of nitric acid and stir it. When the reaction is pretty much complete, I top the beaker off with water to make sure all the silver nitrate dissolves and then leave the insoluble impurities to settle. So after about a day, I return and I am left with a green solution and some white precipitate. The green color probably comes from some copper impurity, but I'm not sure and it doesn't really matter for the next steps. So to make sure all the insoluble particles are removed from the liquid that contains my silver nitrate, I use a folding filter and do a simple gravity filtration. So after a while filtrating, I put the filtrate into two beakers since the volume was getting too much. After the filtration is finished, we are left with two solutions which apparently got a different color, but it's not really much of an issue. In the next step, I will be converting silver nitrate to silver chloride by adding a saturated sodium chloride solution to the beaker. Since silver chloride is extremely insoluble in water, it will precipitate out immediately, and we can see a white fluffy cloud of silver chloride forming. To break apart the cloud of silver chloride, I can stir it around and allow it to settle.
After it has settled, I can easily pour off the water remaining on top. So before using the silver chloride, we need to purify it a bit, since there is still nitric acid, gluconic acid and other impurities remaining. To do this, I wash the silver chloride several times with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and water. Sodium bicarbonate will destroy any remaining nitric acid by forming sodium nitrate, water and CO2 gas, which we can see bubbling out of the solution. After it has been washed, all the wet powder is transferred to a dish on a heating plate. With the help of some extra water, all the silver chloride is transferred and the excess water in this dish is decanted off. Then we turn on the heat and boil off all the water to dry it. After it has completely dried, it has shrunk a little and formed a hard cake. It is also discolored because silver chloride degrades under the influence of light to silver and chlorine gas. The discoloration is therefore not a problem and it will actually help us later. To get my silver chloride cake out, I just wet it slightly and it breaks apart nicely. So this is all the silver chloride I have from all runs. Some are a lot more discolored than the others, because it has been standing for longer. But again, the degradation is not a problem. You can also see that all of the pieces look pretty different. If it is undisturbed during the drying process, it will become a cake, and if it is mixed in between, then it will become more powdery. If it is mixed in between, it will also stick to the dish, which means you have to scrape it off. So it is better to just leave it and not mix it while it's drying. Under the influence of heat, silver chloride will break apart into silver metal and chlorine gas. So we can load up all the silver chloride into a furnace to get our silver metal. So I turn on the furnace and in the meantime I fill up the crucible with some of my silver chloride. I also add some borax and sodium carbonate which will work as a flux. While the first bit has molten, I add the remaining silver chloride slowly, mixed with the flux. I leave the furnace running for a while to allow the silver to form. It actually takes quite a while and a lot of the silver chloride will remain if it is taken out too early. Taking the silver chloride and spreading it out over a large surface and allowing it to degrade under light before putting it in the furnace might actually help by pre-converting a lot of the silver chloride to silver. This can decrease the amount of time needed inside of the furnace. So after a while, I just poured out all the contents on my concrete flooring because I don't have anything to put it on and then let it solidify. So I picked out the pieces of silver from this run and this is what I got. There are some shiny pieces, but most of them are pretty dirty, so I'll go and clean them up. So after I cleaned up all the pieces from all my runs, this is all the silver that I got. I also got a few really ugly pieces that were impossible to clean up. So perhaps in the future, I will remelt them to get it into a better shape. So now that I have my silver, I can find out if I made a profit. So I have 235.21 grams of silver. So as of today, silver is $0.73 per gram, which means assuming the silver is pure, it is worth 171.70 dollars which is more than what i paid for all of the bottles of silver gluconate which cost me 112 dollars so the yield is actually terrible with around 50 percent and if i take in the cost of the nitric acid and the energy it will probably be close to even 
since I got more than what I paid for and I can resell the bottles, I'm honestly not too mad about it.